911 Talk Podcast, episode 91, for Monday, July 2nd, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, product line manager for emergency services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. Over the past year, several new apps have been released that are targeted at the smartphone user to aid them with providing additional information about a particular emergent event to public safety. Now, although that's a noble initiative, the fact remains that public safety uses an analog-based, voice-only back-end infrastructure that is only capable of carrying a voice call. Before any data can be sent from one device to another, the Layer 1 transport infrastructure must exist between the two endpoints to support data. Now, I'm sure that there are still some of you out there that still remember when IVR and voicemail first came out in the mid-80s. At that time, there was actually a fair amount of rotary dial phones still in use that were unable to press 1 for customer service. So in the 911 space, if the existing network won't support direct communications and data from smartphones today, then how do these applications really work and what's behind them? To answer that question, we'll have to create different categories for the applications themselves. Category 1. Application developers that work closely with public safety and deliver their information on a back channel. The public safety technical community is made up of a group of industry experts, manufacturers, public safety officials, and public safety dispatchers and call takers. Now, these individuals participate in the technical forums managed by the National Emergency Number Association, or NINA, the Association of Police and Communications Officials, APCO, as well as the NG911 Institute. Now, two Category 1 developers, in particular, Smart911 by Rave Mobile Security and the Fresh Social Network for Emergency Response by the Fresh Foundation, spelled F-R-E-S-S. Both of these are very active in the industry. In addition to supporting public safety initiatives in general, their work and participation and contribution to the standards bodies is invaluable. They understand public safety application requirements like high availability, resiliency, and protection against DOS attacks. They also understand and respect the funding model for both public safety and the public end user where the application is provided to the public at no charge. Then there's category two, the dude that writes apps. Unfortunately today, anyone with a computing platform, some extra time on their hands, and a few dollars can invest in the software tools required to write a smartphone application. Even if you've got none of that, with only a few dollar investment and an offshore programmer, you can deliver an application fairly easily. Come up with a nice logo, put a little marketing spin on the app, and you're in business. Just sit back, take your cut of the 99 cents, and you can put a lot of money in your pocket in a fairly short period of time. Now, if you've been reading my blog or listening to my podcasts, you'll know that I've brought up this fact a few times already with applications like Crime Push that seemingly allow you to collect pictures and other data, but then tell you that none of this can be sent to the 911 center, but offers you a speed dial key for 911 after collecting your 99 cents for the initial application. Well, this past week, the Nina 911 related email listserv became very active when another company, 911 Emergency Assist, apparently sent letters to 911 centers in the U.S. promoting their vision for enhanced services. But their service required a paid subscription by the end user, and they touted that a quote-unquote donation of 50 cents per user would be given to 911 centers. Now, right away, many administrators became alarmed at the potential legality of an arrangement such as that, as well as concerned for the appearance of endorsement for a for-profit private sector product. Admittedly, there's a very fine line to walk, but several companies have been successful mainly because they contribute to the industry first and rarely promote their products. If there's one thing that's obvious, next generation emergency services for 911 here in the US and 112 abroad in the EU are changing the landscape of what can be done to radically improve public safety response and increase the situational awareness between the user that needs help and the agency that can provide that help. If we've learned one thing over the past 20 years of IT technology advancement, it's been how to use technology to increase efficiency in the networks we use to deliver advanced forms of data. Now, there's nothing new or bleeding edge about the technology behind next generation emergency services. What is new, however, is the use of this technology for emergency services. 
So kudos to everybody in Category 1. Not only are you improving the technical functionality of the emergency services network, you're doing it in a way that is not being considered as profiteering. For the rest of you in Category 2, I hope this past week made it perfectly clear that public safety won't stand for marketing tactics and the impact it could have on your brand could be devastating. My advice to those that believe they have technology expertise to contribute to this industry? Well, the first thing you should do is join Nina, APCO, as well as the NG911 Institute. Secondly, sit back, watch, and learn the industry to understand just how it works and what is needed. Third, at least one person, if not several, in your company needs to earn their Nina ENP certification which many consider a litmus test indicating that you understand the business behind public safety. Finally, participate and contribute in the various work groups and technical committees where you can air your ideas in an open forum with technology leaders from around the world. Hey, the water's great. Come on in. Just make sure you know how to swim. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency?